Thank you for watching this video. Today we will be doing technical analysis on the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday, August 27th, 2021. And for this analysis, we will be using stockcharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. My name is Rodney Constable. I have over 30 years of investing experience, including over 25 years of experience trading stocks and options. I am a former financial advisor, a former vice president of a major mutual fund company, and I am the developer, president, and founder of Simple Market Signals at simplemarketsignals.com. Now, the first thing I want to do here is point out this chart, and then I am, we're going to do something super special today. So uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Uh, so uh, stay with me and make sure you watch uh, clear to the end of this video. But so let's take a look at this chart. Now, I do want to point out that this chart ends on Friday, August 20th. Okay, so bear with me because this is going to be uh, become super important here. All right. And the support and resistance levels real quick, 4374, 4392, and 4440. And this is for the month of August. And this is an hourly chart, right? So each candlestick represents one hour of trading. And again, this chart goes from August 2nd, which was the first trading day of August, through August 20th. Okay? Now, stay with me here because I'm going to show you why I'm showing you this chart ending on August 20th, and then we will move on to an updated version of this, and I'll show you what has happened uh, over this last week and run this same chart through Friday, August 27th. All right, so just so you can see for yourself that this is exactly the same chart that was sent in the August 21st newsletter to all of my Simple Market Signals newsletter subscribers, here's the chart. You can see it's exactly the same chart with the same annotations. And what I want to do is I want to read to you the exact verbiage, but bear with me here, guys, because this is super instructive on many, many levels, okay? And this is under the technically speaking section of the newsletter. Again, I'm in the copy that I send myself. So here's the chart. But bear with me here because I'm going to read through this, but this is going to help you in you know thinking about uh, a lot of different things from a technical analysis standpoint. But I hope uh, through going through this, you also see uh, a, you know another reason, right? Just the technical work that I do in my Simple Market Signals newsletter over and above my proprietary market signals. I want you to think about how this information, just even this one chart, and there's a bunch of charts and things that I include in the newsletter every week, as you see there, but just this one chart alone this last week, I want you to think to yourself and ask yourself, what could this have done for you this past week? Okay. So with that said, bear with me in the hourly chart below of the S and P 500, the covers the time period of 8-2 of 2021 to 8-20 of 2021. We can see that this past week on August 19th, the S&P 500 pulled back to and slightly undercut the 4374 support level, arrow bottom right. That's right here. Okay. Before rallying back and closing above the 4440 support and resistance level on Friday, August 20th. So I'm doing several things in this chart, of course. I'm pointing out the importance of this 4440 level, but we're also reviewing the entire month of August. Okay. So this was the second pullback to the 4374 support level during the month of August. The previous pullback to the 4374 area was on August 3rd, arrow bottom left. That's right here. All right. On August 19th, the S&P 500 slightly undercut the previous August lows from August 3rd, putting in a very critical, now this is the super important part of this, uh, I mean all of it's important, right, but this is super important guys, so bear with me here. So on August 19th, again right here, right, the S&P 500 slightly undercut the previous August lows from August 3rd, right here as you can see putting in a very critical short-term technical double bottom in the process. So what I'm pointing out here is this double bottom in the month of August that's super easy to see, as we can tell here on these hourly charts. So again, every candle uh, on this chart is one hour of trading, all right? But you can see the August 3rd lows, and you can see the August 19th lows, and you can see that on the 19th, the tail of that candle slightly undercut the trading that we saw on August 3rd, and that is a perfect definition of a technical double bottom. And of course, this uh, 4374 level here is the level that we're talking about right here. All right. So let's move on. The fact that the S&P 500 has not had an hourly close during the month of August below 4374 that uh, support level shows how critical the 4374 level is. Again, just underscoring why this is going to be so important going forward. Additionally, the fact that the S&P 500 quickly rallied back to the 4440 level on Friday right here, 
right, Friday, August 20th, underscores the importance of the 4440 level, at least for now. As long as the S&P 500 continues to close on a daily basis above 4440, there probably isn't isn't much to worry about. However, if we start to see daily closes below 4440, then daily or even hourly closes below 4374, this line back down here, we know that the overall market is weakening. Okay. So now, thank you for bearing with me because I wanted you to see exactly what I wrote about this. But now let's see what happened over this last week by taking a look at this same chart, but adding one more week of data to it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. But now let's take a look here over this last week and see what has happened. Now, we already know, right, that we closed just above that 4440 line on Friday, August 20th. We just looked at that in the newsletter version as well as the chart that I showed you, right? So we ended up on Friday, August 20th right here just above that 4440 level. We closed at 4441.67, all right? Now... Let's take a look at what has happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. We can see that, again, we had that bottom on August 19th, that technical double bottom. We rallied back to the 4440 level, which, uh, you know, told me from a technical standpoint that we had some strength here. And sure enough, you can see this really tall candle the very first hour of trading on Monday, August 23rd. And you can see that we had a really nice week and we closed really, really close to the highs of the week. And this last candle on Friday, and again, these are hourly candles, right? So you can see the wick on this last candle in the upper right where my cursor is moving. Uh, we hit a new all-time intraday high during the last hour of trading on Friday, August 27th. But look at that, guys. I mean, that followed through. So we had this double bottom, right, in the month of August on the 3rd, and then we slightly undercut it on the 19th. And then the fact that we did that and then rallied right back within two days, right? Uh, you know, less than two days, right? Because this was early on Thursday. But by Friday, we were setting right at the highs, uh, you know, uh, right above that 4440 level uh, is what I'm trying to get out of my mouth. So we were sitting right above that 4440 level. And that is some technical strength right there, right? When you see that undercutting and then rally right back to that support and resistance level, in this case, 4440, that has been so important during a good portion of the month of August. That is why I wrote the verbiage that I did. Now, you know, we also, you just never know for sure, but this gave me hope that this would happen. But that's why I also wrote in the verbiage in the newsletter that if that failed and started to roll over, we would know that this was an anomaly and, uh, and from a technical standpoint, we were starting to roll over. But this does not surprise me at all. And uh, now that we've taken a look at this on an hourly basis. Let's take a look at the daily for the week, and then we'll take a look at the uh, weekly chart as well. Okay, so this chart is a daily candlestick chart. So each candlestick represents one day of trading on this chart. And I'm starting this chart at the beginning of July. So we can just see July and August. And then the green line is the 50 day moving average. Now, you know, we're going to really focus on what has happened over the last few weeks. But I want to point out that on the 16th, and that goes back to uh, this candle right here, right? So if we go back to the 20th, we knew that we had, uh, with, you know, the chart that ends on the 20th there, we had this candle right here. And at that time, that was a new intraday high as well as a new all-time daily closing high. So that's right here, all right? So on August 16th, we closed at 44.79.71. Well, on the 23rd, we closed at 4479.53. So Monday the 23rd was not a new all-time daily closing high because we fell just short of where we had closed on the 16th. But you can see the wick on the candle. That was a new intraday high, right? So when we look right here, so we had, uh, you know, you can see right here on the hourlies. So we had on the 23rd, we had a little bit of trading above there, but technically we did not close right above the close on the 16th. So anyway, on the 24th, 25th, and the 27th, we had three new all-time daily closing highs this week. Again, the importance of understanding the technical double bottom on the hourly charts, and then what happens after you get that type of a technical double bottom, you get a very nice, strong uh, movement to the upside. And that resulted in three new all-time daily closing highs this week on the S&P 500. 
Okay, so now let's take a look at the weekly chart of the S&P 500 so we can kind of tell you know, from a bigger picture perspective what happened. And again, each candle on this chart does represent one week of trading, and this chart starts at the beginning of 2021, so we're looking at the entire calendar year of 2021. The green line is the 40-week moving average. For the week, the S&P 500 was up 1.52% this week. We obviously closed at a new all-time weekly closing high. And where we closed, we are trading 11% above the 40-week moving average. So if anytime soon we pull back to the 40, I always like to know this, right? So that's why I put this in here. But it would be a, an 11% pullback to the 40-week moving average if we pull back to that, lay up, that level anytime soon. The other thing that uh, you know really kind of stood out to me is we had lower volume this week. Not a huge deal. We are in the month of August, you know, uh, the last uh, part of the summer. So, uh, you know, oftentimes during the summer months, the volume does trail off. So this doesn't completely surprise me. However, I prefer that we have weeks where, you know, we're up one and a half, two percent for the week or whatever that come on higher volume. The fact that we had a lower volume up week, eh, you know, I don't like it, but we also have to keep in mind that we are in the month of August. You know, the volume does tend to be a little bit lower uh, this time of year. So uh, nothing too concerning, but I would much prefer to see a high volume accumulation week like we had back here in March rather than a low volume accumulation week like we had this week. But nonetheless, a very nice week in the markets after, as we saw, a technical double bottom on uh, uh, the 3rd and the 19th of August. So, guys, um, I know this was a little different. I hope you enjoyed it, but I, I want to teach you how to think about this stuff, okay? And, uh, again, I hope you will seriously consider subscribing to Simple Market Signals because for the <laughs> very low monthly price, uh, guys, and I'm probably charging way too little for this, but uh, for the very low monthly price, uh, I, I, I can't imagine who wouldn't benefit from this information. And that's also why I have hedge fund managers, financial advisors, mutual fund wholesalers, as well as individual investors as my clients that subscribe to this newsletter. Let me ask you a few questions. Do you manage any of your own money, including in your 401k or your IRA? Have you ever found yourself out of sync with the market, underexposed when the market is rising, or overexposed when the market is declining? If you answered yes to any of these questions, please pay close attention to the balance of this video because it could be worth a lot of money to you going forward. Would you like the advantage of knowing when it's generally safest and most profitable to be in equities and when it's most dangerous and generally least profitable to be in equities? To learn more, go to simplemarketsignals.com and watch this video that's on our homepage. Want more charts? Want access to proprietary market information? Want to minimize the likelihood you will experience catastrophic losses in the market? To learn more, go to simplemarketsignals.com and watch this video that's on our homepage. Again, that website is simplemarketsignals.com, and I will also leave a link to this site in the description box below this video.